Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Well, welcome to you in worship today. Uh, it's not in Bolton, but Evander Lutheran Church is having their fall dinner on Saturday. So uh, I think it's kind of an all-day event kind of thing. They do a dinner, and they have other activities and things. Things uh, kind of bizarre, you know, so it's kind of a big day out there. So if you have some free time on Saturday, you might want to go out there and uh, patronize the sister church. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is, of course, this uh, insert about uh, putting kits together. That's kind of one of the things we like to do here. And so UMCOR is kind of one of the ministries that we support. And a lot of times they have different kinds of hygiene kits and things that we put together and send out. And so there's some information there about, you know, putting some of those together uh, for distribution this fall. Uh, there also is, I believe, uh, an appeal for the hurricane uh, in Puerto Rico. So just be aware of that, too. Um, you know, we usually have an unpour appeal, so... I'll get the number out for wherever that one is, but uh, I do know that they are going to be, you know, trying to respond to that particular need. Are there any other just general announcements or things to lift up? Yeah. Yes, Pat. We got a notice about the street repairs this week, so I don't know if everybody in Dexter got one or um, if you live in Dexter or around the area, you can look at it. I guess I'll leave it off. Specific blocks that they're working on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, also, I will be sending in the money people donated to Real Hope for the Hungry. I'll mail that tomorrow if anybody else wants to contribute. I guess this is the last day. I... Okay, so any final gifts for Real Hope for the Hungry? Uh, we need to, to get that in. Uh, I'll mention that now. We on Wednesday night, over at your sister church in Grand Meadow, packed uh, two pallets worth of food. 14,000 meals are being sent to the Ukraine. So I think we can feel very good about what we were able to accomplish. All right. Well, let's begin our time together in worship. And as you are able, would you please rise and join with me? In the fall of the world. Sheltered by God, come now and worship. Invited by Christ, come now and worship. Welcomed by the Spirit, we gather as the people of God. Amen. The opening hymn is 189, Ferris Lord Jesus.
<clears throat> Our joys and concerns, those things that we would lift up and would share with one another in God today. Yes. Okay. Did, was it Trista? Krista. Krista. Yeah. Krista. Krista's had a surgery, okay? My cousin. Yeah. Yeah, be a cousin, not My from cousin. church. Not from church here. <laughs> All right. Okay, so. Michelle's cousin, Krista's having surgery, okay? Well, how many people are going to be starting harvest this week? Yeah. Pray for everybody out in the field. Looking good so far. Hopefully everything will go well and smoothly as we begin the harvest. Uh, again, uh, I was really pleased with the response to the food pack. I thought we might get on TV, but that never happened. At least as far as I know. Um, so I was kind of laughing. I said the story is too positive to be on TV, so. But anyways, yeah, we're really excited about that. And this week, uh, I believe that Little Cedar's going to do a food pack. So uh, anybody wants to help with that, go down to Little Cedar. I'm not sure what day of the week it is, but they're doing it. So, okay, well, all right, let's join in the, the opening prayer. Sheltering God, as we worship you this day, cover us with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Gather us in the goodness of your grace, that we may experience your comforting presence and your powerful protection. In your loving name we pray. Amen. We go to the Lord now in a time of reflection and Lord of the harvest, we are so thankful for this beautiful day. We pray for everyone going out in the field that they will be safe, that they will have a reward for their effort as they begin to gather in that harvest. We think of the people of Ukraine and people throughout the world who are dealing with difficult realities of ugliness and war. We pray for peace. We are thankful for the food pack and other opportunities to reach out in ministry and just pray that you would fill us with your spirit, use us to your glory, to proclaim a message of good news and hope and to reach out and grace to those around us. We think of Michelle's uh, cousin, uh, Christopher, and her upcoming surgery and just pray that all will go well, guide the hands of doctors and caregivers. We pray for all and those that need uplifting in body and spirit. And we know that your healing presence and power again will be at work. Help us here now in the community of Dexter to live that faith, to proclaim a message of good news as we share and proclaim that gospel, to truly and genuinely live as your people, as we now pray that prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And it's great to be able to have our choir back to sing today, so we'll be singing.
kids today, because how many of you know Father Abraham? Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Father, Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had father. Remember, it's an action song. No. Oh, you guys aren't going to be brave, but all right. All right, so you can just sing with me, and I'll just kind of do it, okay? All right, so it goes, Father Abraham had many sons, Father and sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, turn around and sit down. All right, I, I, I skipped a couple parts because I was getting tired. You needed Krista today. That's the thing, I needed Krista, I needed some little kids to help me, but all right. But the idea is, now that I'm out of breath, that... You need to be able to do some things. And a lot of times life is about doing something, okay? And that's what we're going to be thinking about today. So let's pray. Lord, uh, you call us to action. And so for that, we are thankful. We are thankful that you help us to sing, to pray, to be about the work of your kingdom. Amen. Okay. Uh, him is uh, number 377 it is well with my soul <laughs>
<clears throat> the call to offering. May our gifts be signs of the compassion we have seen from God. The Lord is ever merciful. Given generosity and joy, at this time I encourage you to place your gifts at the plate at either the front or the back of the church. And always for our viewing audience, you can send your gifts to the Dexter United Methodist Church or United Church in Grand Meadow. <laughs> prayer. Generous God, open our hearts and our walls to be as generous with others as you are with us. Bless the gifts we offer to you, that they may give you gifts of generous love for others. May we be generous givers of our time, talent, treasure, and service that others may find in us generous and loving friends. In gratitude and joy we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Then I'm going to read another kind of one of those uncomfortable stories or parables of Jesus. And this is from Luke 16, 19 to 31. Uh, the rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores. And longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in, in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over that, from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them so they not will also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. May God bless this reading of the word. A few days ago, I was asleep, and in the midst of a dream where I was a soccer player, I was the goalie, and it was a penalty kick. And so uh, the opponent, person on the opposing team, got ready to kick the ball, and 
I got ready to make the save, and all of a sudden I felt a terrible pain in my right knee. And what I realized was, is I had fallen out of bed. <laughs> but the only thing that was really hurt was my pride, but I don't even know if I made the save, so I probably don't have any ideas of becoming a soccer player. And, you know, you think probably to an example, again, a little different angle of when you were growing up, and you wanted to do something and your parents were more than likely not going to let you do it. So you got the idea of trying to get a little leverage and you say, well, so-and-so and so-and-so is doing it and all the other kids are doing it and you know the answer you get. You are not so-and-so. Right? And that was the end of the discussion. And you look at this passage of Scripture and it's kind of a tough story in some ways, but you have this rich man who has basically everything. You know, he has the nicest clothes, probably the best food to eat, anything that anybody could ever want. This guy has it. He's got it all. And right outside his place where he lives, outside the gate, there is this man named Lazarus. And Lazarus has nothing. You know, I think he's trying to struggle to survive. He's got you know, just nothing. He's just sitting there laying there. The dogs are kind of coming and licking his sores. You know, either because they're pestering him or they feel sorry for him. You know, it's, you know, you don't, you don't really know. But you just know that this guy is probably very desperate. You know, he's probably very hungry. He's probably very cold. And, you know, he, he doesn't have anything. And then you see the situation where now all of a sudden... Both men have died, and now Lazarus is comforted, and things are going wonderfully for him, and the rich man is in agony and in torment. In fact, the rich man cries out to Father Abraham, you know, just send Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and come and, and touch my tongue so I'll find a little bit of, of peace and and Abraham says, no, this great divide, this chasm between you doesn't allow it. And then finally, the rich man says, well, at least have Lazarus go and warn my brothers so that they don't end up like me in this terrible place and situation. And again, Father Abraham says, no. And you look at that, and it's, it's like I say, it's kind of a tough story, but... I think the key is what Father Abraham says. Because Father Abraham talks about the law and the prophets. And that's the key. The law and the prophets. You see, basically the rich man should have known, and he boy did know, that he had an obligation to Lazarus to help him because that was a part of who he was of the Hebrew faith. You know, that was expectation. The widow, the orphan, the poor people, you know, you have a responsibility to watch out and care for them. That was ingrained from the very beginning, and that was the understanding that for whatever reason, you know, the rich man just seems to drift away from that. And he knows who Lazarus is, but he doesn't do anything, anything at all, to help Lazarus. And so I look at that and I think, you know, basically, you know, this individual has kind of just really forgotten who he's meant to be. You know, this is to be in green. This is who you are as a, as a person of faith, as a Jew. You know, when somebody's outside your gate, you help them. Uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, Christmas will be here before we know it. Uh, it's hard to believe. Well, for me, it seems like it's going to be here before we know it. You know, the trees are out in, in, the, in the stores and stuff to sell and everything already. And, uh, you know, the, the big story at Christmas time is, of course, uh, for a lot of folks, a Christmas Carol. And there's a number of people that believe that Charles Dickens, who wrote that book, actually based it kind of in part upon this parable. And he decided to kind of give a little different twist or ending. You know, you know the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, the miser with a cold heart, and 
You know, he's suspicious and angry and doesn't trust anybody. And, and uh, basically, you know, he's not very nice to his employee, Bob Cratchit. And still, Bob Cratchit invites him over for Christmas dinner. And, you know, Scrooge isn't going to come. But then Ebenezer Scrooge has the dreams of the spirits of Christmas, past, present, and future. And when he wakes up on Christmas morning, he says, you know, this is a new day. And I'm going to go over to the Cratchit house and bring gifts. And I'm going to give Bob Cratchit a raise. And, you know, you see this wonderful transformation for Scrooge. And there's that one big line in that whole story. Uh, I think it's Tiny Tim is the character that says, God bless us, everyone. And you remember, okay, this story talks about Father Abraham. You know, well, God bless Abraham. You know, he promised him land. He promised him descendants as numerous as the stars. But there's a part of that blessing you also need to remember. You have been blessed to bless others. And sometimes Abraham maybe did that. Sometimes he did. But that was, again, the key. You have been blessed to bless others. And somehow that's what the rich man lost. He lost that ability to see his blessings and to bless others. You know, sometimes in the world we live, it can get easy to become hard. It can be easy to lose a sense of compassion and grace. But I look at this story just simply as what it is. I think it's a warning. You know, it's just simply a warning to say to us, you know, don't let that happen. You know, be a blessing to others as you have been blessed. You know, and let that love and grace shine into your heart. You know, because that's really, I think, what God wants for all of us. And if we follow that kind of understanding of things, we're definitely going to be on the right track. Let's pray. The law and the prophets, we are to be a blessing as we have been blessed. And Lord, help us to realize today that, again, you have been so faithful and gracious to us. Fill our hearts with compassion and grace that we will reach out to those around us in need and share that abundance and, again, find the joy that we are meant to have as we look to you to guide and lead us, and as we offer this prayer in your name. Amen. And our hymn is number 672, God be with you till we meet again.
want you, as you're able now, to please rise and join with me in the dismissal and blessing. God be with you in the week ahead. May God give you refuge and strength. May Christ be the foundation of your life. Well, I want to encourage you to stick around for coffee time and fellowship if you can today. And our closing sending songs of the faith we sing, 236, give thanks. Thank you.